Now it's time for Culture Talk. This is the segment where we talk about the intersection of science, faith, and pop culture, and how culturally relevant topics can be used to start conversations about your faith. I'm joined with astronomer Hugh Ross. Thank you for joining us. You're welcome. You know, today is our birthday episode, our anniversary episode. You know what that means? I do. We have one year of orbiting the sun. We've we've done one full rotation around one the full sun. revolution. Your one full revolution. Yes, not rotation. <laughs> so uh, let's talk about that. Let's talk about Earth's orbit around the sun because it's kind of a fascinating. Um, all of the uh, design put into that is just so fascinating. So let's talk first about Earth's orbit. Tell us what is special about it. Well, the shapes it. of the orbits of our eight planets mm -hmm. is beautifully designed to make our existence possible. I mean, what's unusual about our planetary system is all the planets except Mercury have very close to circular orbits, mm -hmm. which means that you get orbital stability, which mm -hmm. is essential uh, for life here on planet Earth but you don't want them to be perfectly stable. It's the gravitational tugs that we get, the gentle tugs we get mm -hmm. from Saturn and Jupiter and Uranus and Neptune that actually cause the shape of our orbit to change very slightly. Mm -hmm. And that very subtle change generates a very subtle ice age cycle, which as I explained in a probable planet is critical for having billions of human beings live on planet Earth at one time is really the only way we can grow enough food uh, for billions of human beings. And we see no other planetary system that has this extraordinary configuration of a planetary orbit that's unique to us. Yeah, so that's that's a lot of information to unpack. You're talking about first like the shape of our orbit around the sun. And you talk about, I love the word you use, like gentle tugs that we're getting from our neighbors. So if we're getting these gentle tugs, like what about other planets? Is that something that we see in, in other galaxies that we well, see that similar orbit. Okay, we've seen about 2,900 planetary mm -hmm. systems beyond our solar system. And you look at those systems, uh, the big planets that are far away from the uh, s their host stars in the Earth have highly eccentric orbits, which means that instead of being nearly circular, they're quite elliptical. Mm -hmm which means that they're gonna have different gravitational pulls on the small planets at part of the orbit than the other part. And that basically disturbs the stability orbits and makes all the planets non-candidates for life. So for Earth then, mm -hmm. and it's wonderful to hear like you're talking about uh, these, all these other orbits that we've seen and the planets, the planetary orbits are such that it makes life not possible on those planets. But for Earth, I mean, obviously life is here, so it's not just the orbit, though. I've heard you talk about other other things about how our Earth traverses in the galaxy that uh, make it support life. So can you talk about even like its axis? Well, yeah, we have a rotation axis mm -hmm. tilt of 23 and a half degrees. And because we got a single gigantic moon that orbits close to the Earth, that stabilizes the tilt of our rotation axis. When you look at the other planets in our planetary system, the rotation axes do this. So they, they kind of move for our, for our listeners. Which means you get <laughs> radically changing seasons, mm -hmm. uh, which would be a big problem for any kind of mm -hmm. advanced life. Only in planet Earth do we have this condition of a small planet orbited by a close gigantic moon. Mm -hmm. And that's what it takes to stabilize the tilt of the rotation axis. But the other thing we notice about that, make the moon just one or two percent more massive, our rotation axis becomes unstable. And so, you know, why wasn't it a lot less? So what we discover is we need the mass to be near the maximum to stabilize the tilt of the rotation axis in order to slow rotation period down to 24 hours in the precise time window when we humans can exist. 24 hours is optimal for us. So any, any alteration to the axis or any alteration to the moon really in its size. Any would alteration to off. the mass or the orbit of the moon mm -hmm. would mess things up. It's gotta be just right. And what would happen, like maybe even in other planets, what happens if their axis isn't the same as ours? Well, when the axis, like look for example, you look at Mars, mm -hmm. when the axis tilts over, all of its ice melts and a new polar cap has to form because now you've got the uh, rotation axis tilting down closer to the sun. And so it radically disturbs the climates. And if you want to be able to grow food uh, for animals, 
you need a stable climate. So you want winter and spring and fall and summer to be predictable and stable. And that won't happen unless your rotation axis tilt is stable. So all of this adds up to something that seems pretty well designed for life. How can we step into that conversation with maybe some of our non-believing friends who think, well, we're just here and we, we got lucky. How would we speak into well, that? Well, you can say we got lucky in multiple independent ways. Mm -hmm. I mean, one coincidence, maybe hundreds of coincidences that simultaneously line up at the right time and the right place to make our existence possible. That doesn't look like a coincidence to me. I mean, one thing you can do with the rotation axis, it is stable, but it's not perfectly stable. It goes between tw uh, 22 and 24 and a half degrees. Mm -hmm. And it's that very subtle change that plays a critical role and again, developing the just right kind of ice age cycle that makes possible the existence of not just a million humans on earth, but billions of us. So we can thank God that it's stable, but not perfectly stable and unstable at exactly the right amount and with the right periodicity uh, to make this conversation even possible. So that's a great resource you mentioned, Improbable Planet. So that's available at reasons.org for anyone who wants to dig in deeper to this topic. And right? we talk about the revolution yep. and the rotation axis too. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that, Hugh. If you want to hear more from Dr. Ross, visit reasons.org and search today's new reasons to believe. Now we're going to head over to Give and Take, where Jeff Swearing is actually going to be interviewed by Caitlin Carr. She's going to talk to him about how to talk about science and share your faith. Let's check it out. 